heading back to the plaza this morning. Um, that vibration from the prop would translate to your gearbox. Which is supposedly one of the nicest beaches in Mexico. So we gotta sail to the mainland. The weather is gonna be great for us in two days. This is what you guys subscribe for, right? Hi, my name is Kenna and this is Jay. We live aboard our Choi Lee Offshore 41. Her name is Sitka. I'm new to sailing, but I'm learning and loving it more and more each day. Jay, on the other hand, was born a salty sailor. As he takes me under his wing to get ready to sail around the world, join us on our adventure of falling in love with the beauty of life and the wonders of each other. Welcome to the story of us, and welcome to Sailing Sitka. All right. Hi, everyone. Before we get into this episode, I'd like to address some of the questions from last week's episode. So if you haven't watched last week's episode, make sure to go watch that and then come back to this episode. So in last week's episode, we discovered that our prop was bent backwards on one of the blades when we were in Isla Partida. So some of the questions were, uh, did you hit anything? No, absolutely. We did not hit anything. Kenna's going to overlap here an image of our prop prior to us leaving Canada. And yes, we should have changed the prop before leaving. But if anybody that's a sailor try to get a prop in Canada real quick, it doesn't really happen. So um, we had to leave with it. We thought it was going to be fine. Um, but over time and the stress and the metal being fatigued, one of the prop blade bent on itself. Um, and to prove that we didn't hit anything, as you notice in that video, in Partida, there's only one blade bent. Well, by the time we got back to uh, La Paz, which is only like maybe an hour and a half of motoring because we sailed most of the way, the other blade was also bent because with the cavitation and the, the metal being fatigued, it bent back on itself. Uh, now to address the question as to uh, why we don't carry a spare. I mean, in the ideal world, you'd want to have a spare of everything on a boat, but that's just not a realistic approach to cruising. Like, I mean, our boat's 41 feet, a uh, things weigh a lot of my, weigh a lot of weight, and also there are things that you don't change or don't expect to be changing often. So it's not something I would ever carry a spare of, uh, in my opinion, anyways. Um, I mean, that prop was most likely original to the boat, so it had been doing its job since 1976. So would you want to carry a spare for 40 years? I don't think so um, and they're pricey like uh, by the time we got the prop delivered because now we're in real time so it's February uh, 15th today 2023 we just got the prop shipped from Florida to here and in total we're $1,600 into this prop and this is a no fancy prop it's just a two blade bronze prop nothing fancy about it so they're really expensive so it's not something you want to carry in case like you know like they last so long that you'd sell the boat and just a, you know or whatever right so that i hope that uh, answers the question so no we didn't hit anything um and that's why we don't have a spare um but yeah thanks for watching enjoy the rest of the episode Good morning everyone we are on the road again sort of speak and yeah we're heading back to La Paz this morning it's early it's 6 30 7 a.m. something around there um, we decided to leave so early because once we get home we need to get some more food and drop some water or drop garbage off get water as you can tell I'm tired and clean the boat. It got pretty mucky here, as you can see by our decks. But yeah, gorgeous morning. Happy to be out here. Checking with you guys soon. You see that shit? That was cool. Come on! I wonder why we, they do that. We 
We just saw Manta Ray do like a double backflip, like a big, a big Manta Ray too. They have fun, they're having a blast. They just do it for fun? Yeah, by the way, there's wind right now and we're motoring uh, because our batteries are completely dead. Like we've been like trying to like not use the engine or the, uh, the Jenny to charge them. And right now we really need to motor for another probably 45 minutes and then we'll be having a good sail down wind. Probably just, just the Genoa and the Mizzen. But yeah, for now we've got to charge up the batteries. And uh, yeah, the prop, like as you kind of saw before, it's bent. But uh, so far, knock on wood, touch wood, hun. It's um, it's okay. Like I looked at the uh, the shaft, and the vibration is it doesn't. There's not a lot of vibration. Our shaft is like very short, so that helps a lot. So it doesn't translate. The longer your shaft is exposed out to the ocean, obviously, the more um, that vibration from the prop would translate to your gearbox. But ours has this much before it goes into the boat and then it's this long and it's in the gearbox. So it, luckily for us, in this case, it's a good thing. Um, so anyways, hopefully we see another man ready to back with. That's it. Wow! <laughs> I'm looking at Bush that surf. I know, I know you're gonna say in the comments, make the line longer, but I'm having a good time watching Bush to try to race it right now. It's about to enter the channel in La Paz. We're at the first marina here. about to come into La Paz like Jay said and bittersweet feeling honestly it was such a nice little getaway to go cruising for six days there um, we have great boat buddies and honestly it is so nice to be disconnected from internet and service and just be out there with nature and and good friends so really 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 enjoyed our time there but um, for Christmas tomorrow it is going to be nice to be somewhere where we're able to call family members and celebrate with them over the phone. We are lost in the mountains of La Paz. All we have with us is a couple coolers, maybe 200 milliliters of water and a GoPro. And some my buddy and another buddy of mine which is my buddy's brother came to visit from Canada which is nice Sitka is right over there Pretty. so I don't know if you can see but on the top of the trees there there's a bunch of vultures sitting on top of these cactuses. They're looking for mice, I guess, or some sort of prey. Look at them. They're actually big. These cactuses are massive, and these birds... Oh, oh. <laughs> I just caught that one of them poop on video. Nice. Let's go. This is what you guys subscribe for, right? Having people from home visit us was a real treat, but it also made me realize the hard part of cruising. Being apart from family and friends is the downside of enduring this lifestyle. As most sailors, I feel can relate, making the dream come true is tougher than others think. At times, it can be lonely, exhausting, and simply just hard work, but it's what we do to experience times like this. Be closer to nature, escape the hustle and bustle of life, and simply live life the way it should be lived wild and free all right well it's a wrap we're gonna walk down because it's about to get dark and i didn't feel like captaining captaining tonight so uh, i didn't think things through and then bring a headlamp so we're gonna walk down there before we get caught in the dark because as you can see the path is uh 
prone to ankle failures. And as you can see down there, there's a nice catch rig sailboat just about to come in La Paz here at sunset. So our crew's down there with our friends. And now we're gonna go back to the boat. They're lower than the mast. Um, yeah, they're doing a little exercise. Yeah, that's close. Oh, this is crazy. Oh, this guy oh my god. Oh, shit. Bro, he's high. <laughs> he's high. Dude, the Canadian, I know, like, this is close. Dude, imagine being in a dinghy right now. I wonder if they're gonna launch divers. Bro, look at that banga! Yeah. Are they fucking with that one boat? I think so. I think it's a it's a training. It's a practice, right? Like so that boat is pretending to be a bad guy probably. Or they're just involuntarily using the training. Yeah. Uh, that's a little that's a little too close. That's too too close for comfort for old daddy that's safari crazy. here. We are doing another little hike here. And this one is to Belandra Beach which is supposedly one of the nicest beaches in Mexico. So we're pretty excited to see that. And the topography going up is just insanity, honestly. It's beautiful out here. Very, very dry, very deserty, but very not what we're used to back at home, you know? So it's pretty cool. It's freaking hot. Yeah. We're gonna go see the sunset from this little hike. It should be good. The boys are up there, way faster than me. I don't know if you can see them. But yeah, that's today's events. Today's events. And we have Ryan and his brother here with us today. They've been here for a couple nights. It's been nice to see some familiar faces for sure. And yeah, we're already pretty high. I'll show you guys the view from the top. We made it! So basically that's Balejandra Bay. So you can anchor over there in the daytime, but they don't let you anchor here at night anymore. And then just past there is Isla Espiritu Santo. So where we sailed in La Paz is between those islands. Then you come down, wrap around, and the entrance to La Paz is just past that cargo ship over there. And we saw some cool anchorages there. I might mess up the word, but Belinge. And it looks pretty, and you can anchor there. So, and it's only eight and a half miles from La Paz anchorage. So we'll probably go there next and uh, go for a couple days. So we just got noticed yesterday while celebrating New Year's Eve uh, while drinking that the weather is going to be great for us in two days, which means we're hungover and we got to get diesel, gas for the outboard, oil, tons of water and food. And we got two days. So let's go. And that's Kenneth's face not being impressed. 
and we're literally out of food because we were planning on <laughs> <laughs> literally defrosting the freezer. So we've been eating everything in the freezer and the fridge so that we can defrost it. And now the weather window happens, so now we're gonna have to restock up. But it's a 50-hour it's a passage, so we'll just get a bit of food and then defrost it once we get to Mazalan. So this is our fuel gauge on Sitka, if you haven't seen it before. It's very advanced, and uh, but it's, it's coconut proof. It, it never failed me once. You just gotta, you see, you just drop in the hole. And let's see, so that's what, how much fuel we got. <laughs> so we got about all that stick worth of motoring we can do right now, which honestly, that's about half the tank right now. So I'm gonna add the, all the diesel I have on deck, which is 12.5 gallons, two five gallons and a 2.5. And then hopefully that tops it off. And then I'm gonna go refill those. And if that doesn't top it off, then I'll have to do two trips to the fuel station. And today's the 1st of January, 2023. So if you haven't seen last week's episode, happy new year. And I hope all your dreams come true. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you laughing? It's hilarious. It's hilarious. All right, I think I might still be drunk. All right, let's go. See, this is uh, called boat yoga. It's the, uh, the fuel prawn, we call it. The fuel prawn position. So yeah, you heard the guy. We're sailing to Mazatlan, not tomorrow, but the day after that. So it's looking around 49, 50 hours. Um, this is actually gonna be Jay's and my longest sail, just the two of us. So, kind of exciting kind of nerve-wracking um yeah a lot to conceptualize while being hungover as we realized our weather window um has approached us quicker than we expected so now we're going to be struggling for provisioning and doing all those fun things um days before we go here which we weren't expecting but you know what it's all good all our of our boat buddies are gonna grab the same weather window as us and yeah we're gonna head down to Mazatlan and it's kind of a cool story but my parents actually had their honeymoon in Mazatlan so sailing there on this sailboat uh, that is kind of a cool story so yeah um, it yeah, should be good <laughs> As you can see now, it's uh, bent on both sides, so it's not, it didn't hit anything, it's just the metal, it's just like it's beyond gone. So we got to sail to the mainland, it's a three day passage, not the best, but try to sail most of it. And then uh, order a prop, which I can only do tomorrow, today is the 1st of January, and the shops are all open tomorrow, but we're going to have to ship it from Florida, I think. So anyways, <sighs> this is the life of a sailor. <laughs> 